Does your inability to capture more than 6% of the voting bloc represent third parties' inability to campaign as strategically as major parties? No. Or is it attributed more to its pragmatism and an unwillingness to compromise? No, it's basically on a, on a, on a inability to reach tens of millions of people. In 2000, we campaigned for the biggest uh, crowds of the campaign. You know, we filled Madison Square Garden, Target Center, Boston Garden, and I estimated we reached 2% of the people we would have reached on one presidential debate. That's why they keep you off the debates. Pro surged when he was on the debate, and he's not the greatest debater, but he, he, he surged. Uh, on, it, was, it was on getting on the debates that got him 19 million votes. The other part of the question was, uh, or is it a refusal to compromise? Uh, what we are proposing for America is supported by the majority of the American people. Just test it. Test all the polls. They want to open up the debates. They don't like these, abs these obstructions of the ballot. They want full Medicare for all. 59% of the physicians even want full Medicare for all because they want to practice medicine, not bookkeeping. They want a living wage. How many people in this country think that if you work full time that you should earn more than $6.55 an hour? It's absurd. Um, do they want law and order cracking down on corporate crooks who fleece them, cheat from them? Of course they do. Is this a refusal to compromise? The radicals are the ones in power. They're the corporatists. They're the ones who are violating our Constitution. They're the ones who are stomping on the people. They're the ones who are taking the greatest share of the economy's benefits, where 1% of the richest people in the country have financial wealth equivalent to the bottom 95%. You think they're worth that much? You think the 1% of the people in this country are worth as much as the, the bottom 95%? It's crazy. This is extremism. This is radicalism of the worst type. The very idea that they believe that corporations should have the same constitutional rights as we have, as human beings, when the corporate entity is an artificial entity. It's not a human being. It doesn't vote, doesn't have children, doesn't die in Iraq. We're not talking about the employees. We're talking about the corporate entity has been given by the Supreme Court in a rogue decision in 1886. The same beginning, the same rights we have. And all the Supreme Court cases after said, yeah, yeah, great. A corporation is a person for purposes of free speech, for the purposes of constitutional rights. Absurd. The only people who should have constitutional rights in our country are people, human beings. Corporations are not people. They don't vote. They're artificial entities. They can out advantage us in all kinds of ways. They can be in a thousand places in the world at the same time, pitting governments against one another. Can we do that? So that's why Business Week, Business Week magazine in 2000 editorialized, quote, corporations should get out of politics, end quote. Another way of putting it is the corporate entity should never be allowed to participate in elections, funding, political activity, or lobbying of any sort. They want to send their individuals there, that's fine. Not the corporation. By giving corporations equal rights, while they have all the privileges and immunities of concentrating capital and technology and power that we can never approximate, um, we shatter the whole concept of equal justice under law. There's no equal justice under law between you and General Motors or Exxon. You know, if you have a hard time, you're going to get bailed out. You know, if you, if you don't like, can you say to Congress, if we don't, you don't get this subsidy, you're going to go to uh, Guangdong province in China or Mexico? That's what these corporations do with our jobs. So this is very, very important. The extremists, uh, the corporate radicals, the people who want law and order for us but not for them, the people who steal the, the, the sweat-produced gains of working families, they're the ones who are refusing to compromise, not us.